Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 18th of May. Over 400,000 people hit by floods in India's northeast and Assam state. That toll rises to eight. Sri Lanka to default on debt, no money for fuel, says Energy Minister. And. Allies want Pakistan government to stay in power till 2023, say reports. And now for all the details. The flood situation in India's northeast and Assam state turned grim on Wednesday with the number of affected people increasing to 403,352 in 26 districts in the last 24 hours. The Assam State Disaster Management Agency said the weather office has issued a red alert for extremely heavy rain in Assam and neighboring Meghalaya state and an orange alert for the rest of the northeast on Wednesday. Over 400,000 people have been affected by heavy floods in India's northeast and Assam state, triggered by pre-monsoon rains that drowned seven, the authorities said on Wednesday as they warned the situation could worsen. The death toll in the state has gone up to eight in the last four days, as one more casualty was reported from Udalgiri district on Tuesday. The Brahmaputra, one of the world's largest river, burst its banks in Assam over the last few days, inundating at least 1,500 villages along the river. More than 500,000 people have fled their homes to escape heavy floods. Locals in Hojai district were seen evacuating with their belongings, as many residents said, floodwaters rising up to their chests inundated their homes and crops. Water levels in the Brahmaputra were expected to rise further, national authorities said. So far, the Indian Army personnel have rescued over 2,000 people trapped in Hojai district and rescue efforts continue. Meanwhile, India's weather department on Wednesday issued red alert in four districts of southern Kerala state and orange alert in Bengaluru, the capital city of neighbouring Karnataka state. Kerala has been experiencing heavy rainfall for the past few days and it has disrupted normal life in certain places, while Karnataka state has also been reeling under heavy rains. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's Energy Minister Kanchana Vijay Sekara on Wednesday told the parliament that the island nation had run out of money to pay for fuel due to a critical shortage of foreign exchange. Meanwhile, the country was also expected to be placed into default by rating agencies over the non-payment of two sovereign bonds as a 30-day grace period ended. Sri Lanka's Power and Energy Minister Kanjana Vijasekra told the parliament on Wednesday that the country had run out of money to pay for fuel as he appealed people to stop queuing for the next two days. A petrol shipment has been at Colombo port since March 28, but there are not enough dollars available to open letters of credit, he said. An economic crisis unprecedented in Sri Lanka's history since independence in 1948 has led to a crucial shortage of foreign exchange that saw it miss two coupon payments on sovereign bond on April 18. The country was expected to be placed into default by rating agencies over the non-payment as a 30-day grace period ended. Meanwhile, anti-government protesters continue to campaign capital Colombo on Wednesday to demand resignation of President Gotabaya Rajpaksa, who they ultimately blame for rampant inflation and shortages of essentials. Several non-governmental organizations have also set up stalls to provide food and other stuff to the protesters. Uh, some people are jobless, but they also come. They, they want to participate. 
they are keen to participate. And some people have lost their jobs because of this protest, but they don't care about that. On Tuesday, the parliament voted against fast-tracking a no-trust move submitted by the opposition against President Gotabaya Rajpaksa. It is likely to be debated again later in the week. If the motion eventually passes, it could increase the pressure on the president to resign following his brother Mahinda Rajpaksa, who stood down as prime minister last week after violent protest over the economic crisis. In news from Pakistan, the coalition partners of Pakistan's new government led by Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif have decided that the current setup would complete its term that ends in August 2023, local media reports said, suggesting no possibility of election soon. This comes as ousted Premier and PTI party chairman Imran Khan is building pressure every passing day to force the government to go for early polls. The coalition partners of newly elected Pakistan Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif's government have decided that the current setup would complete its term that ends in August 2023 and supported tough decisions to revive the crippling economy in a meeting held on Tuesday, local media reports have suggested. The coalition partners said that they finally agreed that bold decisions should be taken forthwith to steer the country out of the current political and economic crisis. Earlier on Tuesday, Mulana Fazlur Rehman, chief of coalition party JUIF, also said that the coalition government would move towards elections only after introducing electoral reforms and added that the country has just stepped out of murky waters, so there is no point going back therein, in an apparent reference to the recent political crisis. This comes as ousted Premier and Chief of Main Opposition PTI Party Imran Khan is building pressure every passing day to force the government to go for early polls. Khan has announced he would give a call for a long march rally to Islamabad on May 20, which would be attended by over 3 million people who would not go home till the date for the general elections is announced. Moving on. Herders in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have lamented they face huge problems as the government has failed to develop basic health facilities and provide access to safe drinking water to them in the region. They blame the Pakistan government has left all sections of the society at their own mercy over the years, with no development in sight. Herders from the Bakawal nomadic tribe have lamented government apathy to develop basic infrastructure in Pakistan-administered Kashmir as they face problems due to lack of health facilities and access to safe drinking water. The herders said they play a key role in delivering food and other essentials in remote areas while they rear their livestock, but sometimes the members of their community even die during their herders' journey due to no access to health treatment. They also have to struggle to find food and water for their animals. Locals have long blamed corruption and ignorance in the system has become a major challenge for the growth of illegally occupied territory, leaving its future in the dark. They say their patience has given way after no hospitals, schools and basic facilities are in sight to be developed as authorities, the region that work at behest of Islamabad, do not pay any heed to their requests. Moving on, the leaders of Collective Security Treaty Organization CSTO earlier this week in Moscow voiced concerns about the situation in Afghanistan, saying they are ready to maintain border security within the CSTO zone. In reaction to the statement, the Islamic Emirate downplayed the concerns and pledged the Afghan soil will not be used against anyone. The Islamic Emirate, in reaction to the Collective Security Treaty Organization, CSTO leaders' statement in which they expressed concerns over the situation in Afghanistan, said there will be no threat to anyone from Afghan soil. The conference, which was held on Monday in Moscow, was attended by delegations from Belarus, Armenia, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. 
President of Kazakhstan, Qasim Jomar Tokayev, told the conference, the unstable situation there, as well as the unrelenting activity of armed groups on the territory of Afghanistan, continue to threaten the security and stability of our states. According to Taliban's deputy spokesman Bilal Karimi, the Islamic Emirate is very serious in regard to focusing on its security and preventing the use of Afghan soil against others. This follows as earlier Moscow claimed that terrorist groups are trying to enter the Central Asian nations via Afghanistan. In news from Nepal, on the first day of the budget session on Tuesday, Nepal's main opposition CPNUML announced end to its months-long disruption of the parliament, citing that country faced serious economic crisis, which needed to be discussed. Since September last year, the government had not been able to pass any bill due to the UML obstruction. Nepal's main opposition party, the Communist Party of Nepal, Unified Marxist-Leninist CPN-UML on Tuesday formally announced an end to its months-long protest and its continued disruption of parliamentary proceedings. Due to the obstruction, the government had not been able to pass any bill. CPN UML's Deputy Secretary Pradeep Gayavli said that the decision was taken in wake of the ongoing situation in the country, which he said was on the brink of collapse. Referring to events of last year when a split in the party led to high political drama, culminating in the ouster of then Prime Minister and CPN UML Chairman KP Sharma Oli, Gayavli said, this tendency is wrong and always would remain wrong. Yes, बारे में हमरा अड़ान और निरंतर रोनेशन तरफ अपनी मुल्क के उटा कोर्स में गई सही को नाले आमिले आज देखी यो अवरोध लाई हमरो विरोध लाई फरक ढंगले प्रस्तुत करने The CPN UML had been obstructing parliament meetings since September 8 last year, alleging that Speaker Agni Sapkota had failed to play an impartial role in the parliament. The CPN UML alleged. that Speaker Sapkota did not sack the 14 CPN UML lawmakers as recommended by the party. Sapkota's decision to not take action against the 14 lawmakers, including Madhav Kumar Nepal in August last year, paved the way to form a new party called CPN Unified Socialist, splitting the CPN UML and ouster of then Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli. More news from Nepal. 48-year-old Nepali female climber Lakpa Sherpa returned to Kathmandu on Tuesday after breaking her own record for the 10th time for the most summits of the Mount Everest. Upon her arrival at the airport, Lakpa said her latest feat was to encourage fellow Nepalis to set goals and never give up on them. Nepali female climber Lakpa Sherpa returned to Kathmandu on Tuesday, less than a week after breaking her own record for the 10th time for the most summits of Mount Everest by a female climber. The 48-year-old mother of three first climbed Everest in 2000, becoming the first Nepali woman to summit the peak and make it down alive. She scaled the world's highest mountain measuring 8,848.86 meters last Thursday. On her arrival at the Kathmandu airport, Lakpa said she was elated and her summit was to encourage fellow Nepalis to set goals and never give up on them. The Everest has been climbed 10,657 times since it was first scaled in 1953. Many have climbed it more than once and 311 people have died so far. This year, Nepal has issued 316 permits to climb the mountain in the peak season, which runs through May, compared with 408 last year, the highest ever. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.